Good evening from Bali, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, my contemplation all day has been on the the meaningful life, a meaningful life, and I know that this began because this morning the first video that came up on my computer, and you know this happens for me, was a Dalai Lama video, and uh, he was talking about a meaningful life and. It really touched me, it actually resonates with me in terms of what uh, this mind believes is meaningful too. So that I thought I'd share in this quote, uh, in this video, several quotations. It's um, hopefully to help you reflect on what is meaningful and what you might be able to focus your mind on or your intentions on at the beginning of each day or at the end of each day. And I thought I'd start with this first quotation because Recently, many people have been asking me about how long have you been in Indonesia and uh, what are you doing and uh, how's it going and are you living there forever and I don't believe this mind believes in permanence of many things at this point. I definitely feel that every day is new and unique and to say that I will be here forever is not true because I do know that my visa itself will expire shortly. Yet, <clears throat> I'm also certain that uh, I probably thought I'd live in Canada forever, so even having this much time in Indonesia is very different than what my mind would have thought in that time when I was living in Canada. So today, I thought I'd talk about this first quotation because a lot of times people bring to my attention uh, the energies of disbelief, and uh, this is based on that awareness today. This quotation says, keep away from people who try to belittle your ambitions. Small people always do that, but the really great make you feel that you too can become great. And this is so true that uh, whether I find myself helping others feel this way or it, whether I've felt this from others for me, it's such a nice feeling to feel lifted by others who support a journey even when we don't know what the next steps are because even when we're in a place for a very long time we believe that we know our steps and yet everything changes so even my steps today would be different than yesterday if I was living in Canada and my steps tomorrow will be different than they are today when I'm in Indonesia yet many people have moved into a very robotic existence and not very satisfying too when we just feel like we're just doing the exact same thing we've always done and there is always some change in the background there's also a change in the foreground and there's a change in our own mind and to be attuned to this to be aware of this changeability and our adaptability and our ability to adapt to various things whether it's people whether it's places whether it's circumstances is a wonderful awareness and understanding to have about reality and so i came across this quotation too i thought this was very useful in terms of a meaningful life it says a meaningful life is not about being rich being popular being highly educated or being perfect it is about being real being humble being strong and being able to share ourselves and touch the lives of others it's by an unknown author and I thought it was so beautiful because I've just come through this uh, Gilly experience and uh, some of you know that I was there for about a month and I will say that uh, there even more than here though I believe I've brought that back here too this awareness of each moment and part of that awareness was fueled by the fact that my cell phone didn't work for a little while my computer connections didn't work for a while and I was so present with what was happening around and was so wanting to connect with the people around on the island and I met such wonderful people and saw so much beautiful things and yet I can say that it was the most wonderful and the most not easy experiences too because I would feel the pain and suffering of others too. So whether the people, many people that I met would see me as the foreigner who has money and wealth because that's what foreigners bring in to Gili or to Indonesia or that's the bias that uh, Indonesians may put on to seeing a foreigner and perhaps and this is no ego just based on fact I'm going to say a well-dressed foreigner too 
This sort of bias was running through people and so many people approached me and said, take me with you, meaning when I go back to Canada to take them with me because somehow I was going to save them from this um, financial insecurity, which of course happens all over the world. And yet there was also these wonderful moments of connecting just for connecting and sharing and learning about others and you know or some of you know that I speak only a little bit of Indonesian I'm just getting some key words now and I learned a few new words in um, in this Lombok region which is uh, including Gili so this Gili was such a wonderful place for this experience that I know here in Bali I also don't speak much uh, Indonesian even less than what I spoke now in in Gili yet there is this warmth and this compassionate energy that I feel when the time is taken to really connect with others. And I feel this, and I wanted to share this because in Gili, yes, I went around and sang with people and had a great time that way, but there was also a lot of time to just sit in silence and reflect on the energies around me. So whether it was of the ocean, whether it's about the land and earth, or whether it was about people and the energies that they're carrying. And I do know that this mind is very uh, aware of people especially. I also noticed um, suffering, uh, whether in people or whether in animals. So of course I could see, you know, cats, <laughs> which cats are everywhere. Um, for fighting for food or trying to get some attention and I could see horses that were being used for purpose in terms of functionality in terms of getting some let's say wood or building equipment from one place to another sometimes moving people from one place to another and uh, and then the drivers could be quite not easy on the horses too so I saw on some horses at least, um, some significant damage um, on their rump, uh, literally from the ropes or the, the, the ropes, I guess, I, they were ropes that were holding the horses and um, I could see that when the, the driver was either in a rush or just in a bad mood, um, there was a much rougher hit. And, of course, I'd look at those horses especially. Their eyes are usually blocked from the side, so I can't see their eyes so clearly, but I see the welts on their back, and I'm so sensitive to that, and uh, that wasn't easy. But I also saw the same thing that we would see in North America. We might see road rage. We might see anger in, um, in workplaces, which here, I will say in Indonesia, I see less of that. I see less outward anger there's much more contained within there's a lot of frustration and there's a lot of looking for peace which is what a lot of people in Canada do too and so I wanted to mention that a lot of times we think that uh, that when things are all right that everything is good then everything's peaceful and easy and uh, all falls into place and it's rainbows and lollipops and I think a lot of people at least from the feedback that I'm getting, uh, seem to think that you know, I'm just living the life of luxury in terms of being here in Indonesia. And it's a beautiful experience for sure. At the same time, no life is, I don't believe, easy and beautiful. And um, it is all beautiful, but easy and all neat and tidy. So I loved this quotation by an author named Krista. And it says, what if we accept that a beautiful and meaningful life is messy and we stop looking for perfect so we can embrace the real life in front of us? Stop looking for perfect and embrace the real life in front of us. And also, you know, in hearing Dalai Lama, of course, a lot of um, reminders of compassion came up too. And uh, this compassion for everyone going through a journey which is not easy and to recognize that so whether I think of Indonesians looking at foreigners and thinking well they've got the easy life or if I think of foreigners looking at Indonesians and saying oh they've got the easy life they live on the beach every day all of this is not seeing reality and if we see reality we see that life is messy for all of us and yet there is a beauty in that too and I uh, came across another quotation which really reflects how my experience was in Gili and I feel 
that here too in Bali. In Bali, I would say, especially because I've been here for much longer, I feel that there's a comfort level and a comfort level is very nice. At the same time, it doesn't push us to go just beyond that comfort level too. So I know that my trip to Gili was partly to encourage my own system to get beyond my comfort zone here. So this quotation says, a meaningful life is composed of a series of meaningful moments. If this is what we want, then the ability to infuse each moment with meaning would seem to be a skill worth practicing. <laughs> a skill worth practicing and boy did I get some practice in Gilly and I know that I continue to practice here. This meaningful moments because even when someone's just saying hello to me, I mean whether it's good morning with Salamat Bagi or whether it's good evening with Salamat Malam or whether it's uh, how are you, Apakabar, and whether it's uh, no really, how are you? What are you eating? What are you cooking? What are you, any of that, they're meaningful moments. It's a meaningful moment of connection. And I love that. And everywhere I go, I hope to carry this, this piece that each moment can be meaningful. And like I said, in Gilly, partly because of the novelty, is because of that novelty, I was able to really sharpen this awareness of meaningful moments. Here too, don't think I haven't been practicing this, you know that I have been practicing the power of now for some time, yet, again, when we get comfortable with something, we often take things for granted, so not each moment is meaningful, and each moment is, and uh, unless we're actually putting some attention into what we're observing, experiencing, seeing, hearing, tasting, feeling, touching, hearing, communicating, sharing, anything, it's all meaningful. And this gives life meaning. And uh, I thought that I would finish today's video with this beautiful quotation too, because I'm certainly living this. <laughs> but I hope that uh, you might live this too, or this thinking too. It's, uh, it's by Maxime Legace, I guess it's called, or Legace, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> like I say, haha, no, <laughs> that's like I say, <laughs> it's just like I say, it's like I say, no, anyways, if you were French, you will be able to read this properly, but it's Maxime is the first name at least. You'll see these quotations under this video, of course. This quotation says, you can seek the comfortable or the meaningful, choose wisely. You can seek the comfortable or the meaningful, choose wisely, and I can tell you, this entire experience in Indonesia is very meaningful to me. I hope that today you realize that you don't have to be anywhere except exactly where you are to make life meaningful. Have a beautiful day or night, everyone, and I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day or night. <laughs>